Welcome on the show, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. And you know how I feel about Monday mornings, okay? But it's a Monday morning. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Lots of things happened over the weekend. Lots of things to discuss. But let me start with this one. Um, Aimba suffered their worst defeat of the CAF Confederations Cup on Sunday, losing 3-0 to a Algerian side ES Setev at the 8th May 1945 Stadium. People's Elephants had come from behind to defeat the Algerians 2-1 at the Aimba Stadium a week ago. But North Africans showed their superiority in the reverse fixture with eye-catching performances. The Nigerians will visit third place Alali Benghazi in their penultimate group game on April 21st at the Matayas of February Stadium in a must-win tie before welcoming table toppers Orlando Pirates for their final group game on April 28th. Orlando Pirates are currently top of the table on eight points, two points ahead of second place Aimba after their 3-0 win over Alali Benghazi on Sunday. Alali and Setif are both on four points. Aimba's previous largest loss this season was a 3-0 defeat at Al Marek last December in a CAF Champions League first, sound, first round fixture. I've got Shayo Ogutoye with me as a sports analyst on the show with me today. Good morning, Shayo. Yeah, good morning, Wally. It's very obvious that um, they have better football structures in North Africa than we do. Uh, and that's absolutely. why we, we always meet our, our nemesis whenever we get to meet North African countries. Now we lose to Ossetif, 3-0. Massive win for them. Absolutely. And I think um, with the defeat of Enimba, the group is wide open now. You, you, you know, you just read out now that Enimba have six points. And they are just two points ahead of Benghazi and um, Setif, who defeated them for four points each. So the, the, the structure of this North African side will still come out to play against other teams in Africa. And that is why the best teams in Africa are in the northern part of the continent. So sad. Okay, let me look at um, the... Medals, as at close of proceedings yesterday, Edo 2020, let's look at um, Delta City on top with 139 medals. Um, Edo State second with 144. The only difference is that um, Delta has more gold medals than Edo City, actually second. Now, Lagos are far away fifth with just 41 medals. So we can actually say that um, all things being equal, Delta and Edo should have it. Um, Shayo, should have it... Um, in their pockets, so I think it's a race between Delta and Edo at this point. We have a few days to go now. Yes, I think it's just a two-horse race now, because um, looking at the uh, table, the medals table now, it's Delta and Edo who are close in um, combat between this uh, medal table, and all other, you know, states are just way behind them. You mentioned Lagos with 41 medals, just 41, compared to the gold medals that Edo alone have, or even Delta has, is, is, is just more than Lagos, and it's massive, and the majorly next, massive. The next person to Edo actually on this list is Bayelsa, and they only yeah. have 72 medals. Yes. So you can see what we're talking about. It's just like a two-horse race here, and that's, that makes it much more glamorous now because we now know it's going to be between Delta and Edo State. Okay, now before I go, let me ask you this question before I read my story to you. Shayo, what most people thought was that the Edo 20, the sports festival across Nigeria is supposed to be a grooming ground for raw talent, to look for talents for the future, the Olympics, the Commonwealth Games, but now it's gone beyond that. You see people, um, states poaching, you see cheats, you see elite athletes coming to join their state for whatever reason. The essence of the sports festival is defeated if we have elite athletes and we are poaching. It's supposed to be a grooming ground for future athletes. Yes, you, you see, the problem with the Nigerian system, it has, it has eaten deep into, into every sector in Nigeria. Uh, you, you, you also take a cue from football, where all these under-17, under-20 age grade competitions are also being exploited by ourselves. And at the end, we still suffer for it. So when we do not... Uh, do the right things at the right time. When we cheat on, with every opportunity, we'll still 
suffer it at the end. That is just what is happening. Let these young talents grow. Nurture them, not to bring uh, the best of the best from somewhere around the country and then win medals and then they'll go out to represent us and then they'll fail also. That is exactly what's Let happening. Let me tell you why I brought that matter up in the first place, okay? Because um, okay. despite the fact that it's, it's a grooming ground, um, the main organizing committee of the National Sports Festival in Edo said has disqualified Dino Ebarakuma, thereby stripping him of the medals he has won so far. Ebarakuma, according to reports, registered for Team Rivers heading into the festival, but eventually fraudulently turned up for Team Bayelsa without a proper clearance by the NOC. The development, the organizers say the four gold and two silver. He has won six medals. So far, one have been cancelled. Meanwhile, there are insinuations from different quarters that Team Bayosa, as other athletes, it patched right at the venue without proper documentation. It remains to be seen if more of the Team Bayosa athletes will suffer the same fate in the next couple of days. Now, the organizers, the MOC, are blaming Team Bayosa. I thought when the athletes got there, they were being checked. How did they overlook that mistake? Let's start with blaming the organizers first. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you see, it, it still boils down to what we have been saying. You cheat and then you are being punished now. For, for, for me, I think we still need a stiffer sanction on teams that are found wanting in, in this regard. Because it should, it should serve as a lesson for others. Now he has been stripped of his um, of his medals. He's won six medals or so. He's been stripped of it, and a heavy sanction should be placed on those teams. Also, now you made mention of um, the organizing committee. How were they able to overlook such when he has been tested? I think so many so many uh, questions needs to be answered in that regard. Before I go to my to the English Premier League this morning, um, the El Clasico. And of course, Real Madrid got the better of it. And some are saying, is this the end of Lionel Messi? Well, for Lionel Messi, it, it, it will always, he can never play football forever. That is just it. You know, since Ronaldo are we getting, left. Are we, see, are we seeing the end now of Messi? Uh, Yes, he's in his twilight of his career. You know, he, he has given all, he has nothing else to prove in football. He has won six Ballon d'Ors. He is, he is arguably the best player uh, of, of football. So he cannot continue to play football forever. Okay, let's go to the English Premier League this morning. Now, Manchester United manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer believes it will still require a miracle for his team to catch Manchester City at the top of the Premier League table, despite beating Tottenham Hotspur 3-1. City are currently 11 points ahead of the Red Devils, but Solskja is more focused on getting results and performing well in all of the remaining matches. VAR played a controversial role in the first half when Edison Cavani's goal was disallowed after an incident involving Sun Hyung Min and Scott McTominay. Cavani still managed to get on the score sheets in the second half, and Solskjaer was very clear that himself and the team want the Uruguayan to remain at the club next season. I think from that moment onwards, we played some very, very good football. I know we conceded a goal after that, but they came together. They, uh, they weren't going to let a decision like this derail de our season because... Uh, uh, a strength in the team and character in the team is to come together in difficult moments and we've done that many, many a time this season. <laughs> it's not theoretically important, but it would take a lot and would uh, would take a, a miracle, but sometimes miracles. Uh, for us though, it's uh, we just have to get as many points on the board as possible and keep uh, getting the wins that we need to uh, to make sure we've improved from last season and we want to at least uh, get as close to them as possible. We've had uh, upfront and honest meetings, of course we've had, and uh, there's no secret to keep him. Uh, I don't think it's any secret to uh, that this has been a difficult year for everyone. Uh, with a pandemic, it's not been possible to have friends over, uh, family over without quarantine, you can't travel. He's not 
been able to uh, experience the fantastic uh, culture in Manchester and in and around and in England. And uh, he is contemplating and thinking hard and long about what he wants to do. And I understand. Uh, he knows what we want. Now, Shayo, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer just being modest? Or do you think that it will take a miracle for them to play catch up with Man City? I think he's, he's just been spot on here. It's it's going to take a miracle. You can't expect City to lose four straight games in about six games to go. I mean, it's it's totally impossible in, in football sense now because City are the dominant force in, in England. And as it stands, United have to, you know, capitalize on their own errors. That is if United are even going to win their remaining fixtures. Okay. Um, before I go to City, um, Shayo, let me honestly ask you a question, and please don't laugh about it. It's not a joke. Um, I have, um, you know, it's not, it's not good not being used to winning. So when you win once in a while, it actually becomes a big thing, you know? And that's why a, a, colleague, a, a colleague of mine went on social media after the match with Chelsea winning, and he was like, all of you must join Chelsea, become Chelsea fans, because they won one game. And then somebody in the studio, before this program started, also was saying, they are the best team in the world. I'm like, oh, because they won one match, when? So, you know, I understand the, the applies. It, they're not used to winning regularly. So when they do win, they want to have a party. They want to call Paso and all that and have a big party, you know, <laughs> when they win once. You know, I understand. But, but do you think, uh, I've always seen Chelsea more as um, a Champions League team. They've got fantastic players in team of Werner, Hakim, Ziyech, who for me are more like um, Champions team players than um, English Premier League players, really. Uh, yes, I I totally agree with you. If you look at the table now, you see Chelsea in fifth, uh, played 31 games and have um, 54 points. So it's it's going to be a massive fight to the end. They want to go to the Champions League. Yes, they can do it. They have um, the Champions League itself to contain. Shayo, somebody, uh, Shayo, somebody even predicted them in the finals, really? <laughs> well, they have to win their... their they are tie first. Yeah, of course. Against Porto, which yeah. they have a, a a foot already in the next round. So I see them. I see them going far. But if they win Porto, can they be able to beat Real Madrid? It's a big ask. It's a very big ask. But they have a safer route to the Champions League next season. Try to win all their winnable games so that they can eclipse either West Ham or Leicester City from the top four spots. If you want my opinion, Shai, if I go to my next story today, I am not a fan of Chelsea, I never will be. But against Real Madrid, I think on a good day, they will take, they will take Real to the cleaners. On a good day, Chelsea will, yes. will injure Real Madrid on a good day. Because if, if you look at this Madrid team we're talking about, the frame of this team is weak. No doubt, yeah. Very weak. If you look at the players, uh, most of them are in the wrong side of 30. You understand? And Chelsea are in their youthful uh, uh, time now. You know, the, the likes of Timo Werner, you've mentioned, even Tammy Abraham is not having enough game time. We have uh, Pulisic, we have uh, Harvard, Kovacic, Kante, the list is endless. These guys can run you ragged. True. You understand? So, yeah. And they have a very good coach who understands football's dynamics. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be a very, very tough game against Real Madrid. Should they you know, defeat Porto? Okay. Now, Pep Guardiola says City's 2-1 Premier League lead, defeat to Leeds should not detract from the incredible achievements his side have accomplished this season. Premier League leaders suffered a last gasp defeat to the Yorkshire outfit at the Etihad Stadium, failing, um, falling to Stuart Dallas's injury time strike after Ferran Torres had cancelled out the Vistas opener. However, the defeat marked only the, the team's second loss in the last 36 games, with City winning 27 of 29. A feat, Guardiola says, should not be diminished by one result. Yeah, he ran two times. No more than that. So... Uh... And uh, yeah, it's, of course, a weapon. He's an exceptional player with good pace, and every player under under Marcelo is getting better. So he played a good game. Listen, they make changes, but maybe in Dortmund we're going to play the same lineup than today. I don't know. <laughs> so the players make a mistake. I said many times, you play because I would not let you play, but it's not because I reserve these players. I put this selection for to win that game. 
and and that's all. And I demand the guys who play every single game to win, not because uh, I don't select competitions. I don't select uh, teams uh, or games. Uh, I select every team to win this specific game. If not, it will not be possible to arrive in this position like we are in the Premier League and the other competitions. So now we are going to wrestle together, going to prepare two days, the games in Dortmund and after the other ones. Yeah, but uh, uh, listen, I, dis- I decide for this election today. So, and I know that, uh, you know, with 28 games, we won 26 and the rotation was exceptional, isn't it? And now the problem is you ask, so you have to, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it can, it can be possible. You know that the same day we win, the selection can be possible. The reason why, when we lose, the selection can be not the reason why why we don't win. But you don't know, I don't know it either. So I don't know. I don't know what's happened. If you tell me if the other players today play today, you can assure me 100% you have win, you will be a manager, perfect manager. But I don't know. I don't know another selection would would happen. I don't know. So only a thing I know what happened with the guys who played. Like uh, we consider goal was uh, avoidable, so we are to be more aggressive, more concentrated in that, and and uh, we didn't do it. And and and, and um, yeah, we create enough chances to win the game. We didn't do it. Congratulations to Leeds. Shayo, I have to clap. That is modern day coaching, encouraging his players. He says, don't take away all the while we've been winning, and you choose one day, that's one loss, and bring my guys down. Please don't do that. They are fantastic players. That's modern day coaching for me. I totally agree with you. You know, he himself mentioned now that they've played 28 games and have won 26. I mean, which other team is more consistent in England than Manchester City? There is none. And that is exactly what City did. You know, when, you know, w- w- this season is actually the most odd season of all, where we had so many teams at the top of the table at one point in time or the other. We had Tottenham, we had um, Liverpool, we had United, even at the time we had Leicester. But it was only City who showed enough seriousness, and that seriousness spanned out to, you know, when they started winning games consecutively, back to back to back, you know, so... Guardiola has been able to group this uh, set of players together and has make a compact and simple unit between them. Now, Guardiola, now, now some, a, some coaches in the La Liga and the Bundesliga and, of course, the Le Championnat have said, listen, in modern-day football, you can only win if you have a large squad, a big team. But Gadiola says, I don't pick teams, I don't pick uh, matches, I don't look at FA Cup, I use my first 11 for every game. Isn't that a risk? He uses his first 11 for everything. Well, I, I would not agree with Gadiola there, because Gadiola is a coach that really doesn't have a first team. If you, if you look at his selections, Today, De Bruyne plays. Tomorrow, De Bruyne doesn't play. He uses Bernardo Silva. You know, he uses uh, Gabriel Jesus. Next tomorrow, he doesn't use Jesus. He uses Foden as a false nine. You know, Sterling as a false nine. So, the only position that is guaranteed in City right now is maybe the goalkeeping position and um, Ruben Diaz position. The rest are up for grabs. And possibly because he has eyes on other competitions too. You know, they have chances to win all competitions this season already. So I think Pep is just playing a mind game there. Mind game. Modern coaching, like I said earlier. Now, tennis. Yeah. World number one Novak Djokovic said on Sunday that mentally he missed tennis as he prepares for his first match at the Monte Carlo Masters since winning the Australian Open. The two time champion who decided to skip a trip to Miami get his campaign on the way against either recent Miami Open finalist Yannick Sinner or 2017 runner-up in the Principality Albert Ramos Vinoas. Meanwhile, the Serb could not gauge whether it was the right decision or not to postpone Roland Garros by a week, saying it was something that simply had to be accepted and that it was hopeful the short delay could lead to more fans attending. I don't think uh, there is anything uh, special I have to do in terms of preparation in order for me to feel my best on the court. I mean, I've, I've been training, training quite a lot on clay actually ever since I, you know, pulled out from Miami. I was um, 
you know, I was I was hitting on clay and uh, uh, here in Monte Carlo, actually, where where I reside with the family, so um, it was convenient and feels great. Uh, I feel uh, physically prepared, mentally. I missed I missed tennis, you know, last couple of months that I've haven't been competing. So I look forward to my first match. I, uh, it's unfortunate we don't have a crowd, but. Uh, you know, it's uh, an, a common thing nowadays, but hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll be seeing crowd very, very soon on big tournaments uh, in Europe. Uh, it's hard to say, I mean, whether it was the right move or not. I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, in the French Federation or the French government to understand what is going on, you know, in Paris and, and, and uh, you know, what are the reasons for that? But, um, you know, obviously these are these are the things that we just have to accept and and, and, and kind of uh, move on, uh, you know, hoping that uh, the tournament will be played in the end of the day because that's <laughs> that's what we want. So, Shio, um, King Djokovic is back and he says he missed tennis and, of course, he hopes that... Um, um, the one-week extension of Roland Garros will, might bring in more fans into the stands when the matches start. Hello, Shaya. Yes, yes. I think um, for Djokovic, what he has just done is to send Shivas into his um, opponent's mind with this interview he granted. You know, he's, like you said, King Novak Djokovic. You know, he's this stylish uh, player which which handles the 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 racket well and you know he, he has he has a lot of a lot of panache to his game so he is actually going to do well at the monte carlo masters because he himself said now that his hands are itching him he wants to get back into action quick and fast so that he can start doing business and prepare well for uh, the grand Slam coming up. Okay, now I'm um, still on tennis. This man will give you a run for your money. They call him King of Clay. Rafael Nadal says his body's feeling in good shape for the moment and that he's excited for the return of the Monte Carlo Masters after last year's tournament was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking on Sunday ahead of his opening match on Wednesday against either Frenchman Adrian Manarino or Argentine qualifier Federico de Bones, Nadal backed his health and his game. Adal also said he hopes to compete for all the important titles during the day, during the clay swing, while congratulating Djokovic for recently breaking Roger Federer's record for most weeks in the number one ranking spots. Good, I'm feeling good. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I take it a while. After Australia, going to be my second tournament. It's true that um, the situation that we are facing mm, not helps to to play that often. But yeah, arrived an important part of the season for me, and I think I did uh, the right work to be to be ready. So uh, let's see. Remain a couple of days of practice here, but yeah, happy the way that I am playing, and um, yeah, for the moment my body uh, is in good shape. So, uh, yeah, I am excited about playing here in Monaco again. Monte Carlo, as everybody knows, is one of my favorite tournaments without a doubt. I love being here. Of course, we're going to miss the, the, the crowd and the, the, yeah, the normal tournament. Uh, but um, we are happy that, uh, well, I am happy that uh, we are still able to, to play. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, be here always is a good news for me. So excited and happy, and uh, hope to be ready to give my best. And I hope to be able to come back next year with uh, with a different uh, different story, with a normal situation again. Now, Shayo, everybody should be scared, really scared. He's the king of clay, Rafael Nadal, and he says, "I'm going to play in every clay tournament this year." Everybody should be scared right now. Absolutely. And I think um, we all have reason to be scared because, like you said, he is the king of clay. And um, he said his body is in good shape. So no injuries, no worries, nothing. The only thing that is there is there will be no fans. And uh, with no fans, no pressure too. So, But he is the king of clay. I, I would actually love to see a Novak Djokovic and um, Rafael Nadal final in the Monte Carlo. Okay. 
Now let's go to some basketball NBA now. Los Angeles Lakers point guard Dennis Schroeder praised this team's blowout win over the Brooklyn Nets, which saw his first career ejection. The Lakers, without key players like LeBron James and Anthony Davis, were leading 6-6-62 when the eight-year pro exchanged words with fellow point guard Kyle Irvin. Now both were called for two technical fouls, and Schroeder, who appeared to have made a taunting gesture towards Irvin, later admitted he wasn't aware he received the first foul. Head coach Frank Vogel echoed Schroeder's sentiments that the win was one of the Lakers' best after doing so with a depleted side. We're competing out there, you know, and just try to get a W. Um, I think it was unnecessary. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, unfortunate that I left my team out there, you know, by themselves. And uh, I mean, I didn't really I don't even know what I did, but uh, I got kicked out and um, I apologize for that, you know, just uh, to my teammates. I didn't know at first that we got double technicals when he came up to me. That's, that's the first thing. But after that, I asked him, I kept asking him what, is, what he is talking about. And he kept talking, kept talking. Then he got kicked out or got the second technical. And uh, I just, I mean, I said, bye, you know, uh, probably, I don't even know if I raised at him. I don't, I'm, I probably did. Um, I mean, and then he said, you going too, because we raved at him. And I didn't even know I got the, you know, first technical with him when he came up to me. But I mean, it happened. Um, I can't take it back. So I just try to move forward now. Well, yeah, you know, I think it is. We've had some good wins, but, you know, this is, uh, this is what I wanted our guys reaching for in tonight's game. You know, when you see guys out and you see a great opponent like the Nets, um, you know, you can be a little bit overwhelmed and not sure if you're going to have a chance to win it. But, you know, you want to have a go after these guys mindset. And, you know, we knew coming in that if we were able to prevail shorthanded against this opponent, that uh, it would feel good. <laughs> And it would be one of the best wins of the year. So, you know, happy about that. Shia, before we go on the show today, quickly, Los Angeles Lakers without Davis and LeBron James. Massive players, but um, they still come back and win. And they are praising themselves and listen, we did well, despite the fact we are missing key players. Yes, I totally agree with that. Sometimes in um, sports games, actually team sports games, you know, you have teammates fighting one another. It's... It actually shouldn't be encouraged. It actually kills the spirit of the team. But good one for Lakers as they were able to, uh, to you know, win the tie on the night, and they were able to. to is okay. Shayo, if I have you on the show, I think I want to say a big thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much, Shayo. Thank you for always a pleasure for joining us um, at such a short notice. Thank you very much. That's all we can take on the show today, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa on a Monday morning. Join us same time tomorrow, same station for another edition. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.